hello everyone and welcome back to the channel okay so the last 24 hours of the day has been a whirlwind so crazy so i'm gonna tell you the update of just the last 24 hours of my day and then i'll show you footage from the last baby shower that happened over the weekend and then um this cute onesie that my aunt got me i love it okay so anyways whoo thank goodness that my cousin christina she must have felt it called me right before i was about to do this video so i was able to like process a little bit of my emotions well a lot of my emotions with her so therefore this video quality will be much better since i kind of talked it out with her a little bit so i don't sleep you guys know that it's like four hours total but in like hour increments so i woke up around three o'clock and i go to the restroom and then i just started praying and then the holy spirit reminds me he's like okay reach out to the midwife so backstory when i when we found out we were having pregnant even before when we were trying my goal was to have a um natural birth at a birthing center and then of course we found out I, I found out we were pregnant and then i reached out to the birth it's called the birthing center it's down the street from the house and just like asked the questions and all of that and then we found out that we were having twins and the birthing center said you know we don't specialize in twin v-backs but here is a contact her name is allison so then I reached out to Allison, but this is really early in my pregnancy. I was probably like 12 weeks or 13 weeks and we had a conversation, just kind of general information. And she was like, we can schedule um, an appointment for me to come in and do a consultation with Chris um, whenever you have time. So I never reached back out to her. I started, of course, going to my specialist doctor, my OBG doctor, and I kind of like was like, okay, since I'm having twins, the option of having a natural labor, this is natural, like no epidural natural, vaginal, like the pure unmedicated, unmedicated birth. I was like, that's out of the question since I'm having twins. I don't know why I thought that. So we all know that my birthing plan is that I want to deliver vaginally. My opinion on having an epidural or not having an epidural is like, we'll see. Labor as long as I can, but if it get too, get too bad, go ahead and give me that epidural. But I know it's like a cascade of interventions and it kind of leads to a C-section like I know. So I've been doing all this research, all this research. And then the Holy Spirit at three o'clock in the morning was like, reach out to the lady, Allison. So I send her an email three o'clock in the morning and I'm like, hey, if you're available today, <laughs> um, let me know because my husband's off. Chris took off today. And she emailed me back. So we had a, a MFM, regular specialist doctor appointment today. And she emailed me back while I was in the waiting room. And she was like, um, I'm not going to be in the office today, but I'll be happy to meet you. What time? And then I turned to Chris and I'm like, hey, don't think I'm crazy. And he's like, oh, Lord, <laughs> which is his response to every all of my shenanigans. He's like, um, what, what did you do now? <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're going to go talk to the midwife today. I was like, okay. So our appointment with the MFM is at 10 o'clock. It's never past an hour. The place is 30 minutes away. So I'm like, okay, let's meet her at 12. So I text, I email her back and I'm like, are you available at 12? She doesn't email me back. So we go to the store, like cause we got out of, of the appointment early. And then I just call her. She answers. It, it's it's 11, like 1110 at that time. She was like, I'll do my best to meet you at 12. Like, I'll see you at the, the center. So we go to the center. And on the way, I'm telling Chris, like, I'm just really, um, I just really want options. Like I just want to be able to 
not feel like I'm forced to listen to anything the doctor says because at the end of the day I can always choose the midwife route and I can labor at home or at the birthing center or even at the original place that I wanted to go that's down the street from the house because they're friends so we're like yeah 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 that's cool so oh back to the MFM Mila turned back around so she's no longer head down she went up and their heads are like up here so both of them are breached so Mila moved and still a Marley moving I felt it on Thursday when they moved well when Mila moved but I couldn't tell which one it was I just knew somebody moved but it was actually Mila so now both babies are breached so Christina made me not made me but she kind of Help me realize, like, that's probably why the Holy Spirit was speaking to you because he knew that they were about to flip over and you have opportunities to have. You just have other options, basically, now. So, we go there. Super nice. She answers all the questions. She kind of confirms that I do not have to have an induction, like, going into spontaneous labor is the natural best way for these twins oh she's been a midwife since she was 18 and she's done um so many v-backs with twins like so many that's why she's like the go-to person because she specializes in it and she was basically telling me like breached babies it's not the um she's done so many in in and it's not that you have to do a C-section. It's just harder for the doctor. The doctor wants to eliminate risk of being sued. So when the baby's coming down, breach, sometimes the mother um, gets the urge to push. And the, the provider, whoever is assisting that birth, will go ahead and let them in, in, um, push the baby out. And then they're not essentially ready, like their cervix not softened enough or they're not dilated enough and therefore the surface cervix will um close on their neck once they come down and then that is where the issue comes with birth but whoever is the provider needs to be well skilled enough to be like yes sir yay or nay when it comes to pushing when they're coming out and guide the baby so she's like it's not the mother's fault it's whoever is over that baby that needs to know the proper way to breach but because that happens and that is you know a risk most doctors just be like i don't do it <laughs> c-section it is if it's breached so she kind of kind of gave me the history on that and she's like i'm fully confident <laughs> what i've done with twins and being breached uh uh singletons and twins like she's like that's my jam anyways <clears throat> we've talked about all types of stuff with her <clears throat> and here's my i don't know hesitation or we'll, we'll say hesitation so <clears throat> with twin um going through midwife the fee is 5500 when i had maverick c-section at the hospital we didn't have to be induced because I was actually in active labor. Hey, mommy. Hold on, guys. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. So, what was I saying? Oh, so Maverick's uh, cost. After I had Maverick with a siege section, we stayed in the hospital for th three days. We didn't get induced like Pitocin or all of that, but we did have it epidural. I had to pay out of pocket $2,000. And so I think me and Chris are like calculating and like, wait, it is going to be more to use a midwife than having him at the hospital, right? So, you know, in our mind, but there could, of course, with twins, you're charged for everything. So it'd be two epidurals, it's two C-sections, it's two if they're in IC, everything's double. So really don't know how much it will cost out of pocket to have these twins but that's another thing i had to check myself i was like am i making a decision based off money like would you and 
because the the 5500 will have to be due like up front versus in the hospital you have the baby they let you go home then they hit you with the bill like a month later so i'm checking myself like okay are you making decisions based off of uh financial reasons right now like if you had literally a million dollars in the bank would this even be um a barrier for you so that's one and then the other barrier for me is not having the option to have an epidural even though in my birthing plan i want to labor as long as i can without um an epidural but still like a safety net <laughs> But it's one of those things I did read. It was like, if you're betting on having an epidural, you're going to have one. You just have to like switch off your mindset and be like, I'm not doing it. And that's the only way to make it through or something like that. So these are real, real emotions that my emotions that I'm trying to navigate. But when it comes like I want to spend as long as I can spending time with God and just praying and asking for his advice and the Holy Spirit leading me to what I should do or how I should plan. Because he already knows the end. He already knew that I was going to be pregnant. That's why he told Dr. Bridget. He already knew it was going to be twins. So he already knows how this story ends. So I'm praying for him to give me some type of advice. And then also Christina was like, well, you know, <laughs> He told you at three in the morning to go reach out to a girl. I was like, that is true. So it's, it is hard to essentially decipher like your wants versus God's wants. So that's where I am kind of right now. Like who, who should, what voice should I be listening to? Um, yeah. What voice should I be listening to? And at the end of the day, the girls I have full confidence that the girls will be okay. Like they're going to come into this world and be perfectly healthy and fine. Just the road to that, I'm a little hazy on. What should I do? And I know for a fact, <laughs> I know for a fact, this whole not wanting a C-section is not me. Because with Maverick, I didn't do any, I didn't, I did read the books, but I didn't do a lot of research. And I was like, give me the epidural. Literally when I checked in, I was like, tell him to meet me at the room. Like I was playing no games. I wanted all the drugs. I was like, I'm not trying to feel nothing. Like whatever y'all need to do, do it. So this is such a dramatic change from where I was with Maverick. That's how I know that part is definitely the Holy Spirit. Because I was like, baby mama, the movie, I was the, oh, oh, like, I wanted the epidural. I want it all. So, that's where we at. That's why I told you, this all started today at 3 o'clock in the morning. It is now um, probably like 4 or something. And this is real time. <laughs> I'm going to post this video. And we, we are going into some deep, praying um yeah you're about to see how this shakes out and i'm gonna eliminate because if if god wants me to do the midwife route like the money will come i'm not even there's a will there's a way so that's kind of where i'm at right now the next option that she gave me she was like you can do it at home can do it at the birthing center or, or here so that's another thing I, at first I was like no to my house but I'm like no I'm like I, I like my house I get to walk around so sorry I'm rambling that's a lot to unpack still thinking through it still need to go in my corner my my um closet literally my closet and <laughs> and just pray and really hear from God in hopes that and hope that it's clear as day on what should happen and what's the best option for these girls. Um, I'm sitting in their room right now, I'm about to start washing some of their clothes, and we'll, we we shall see. <laughs>
we shall see but okay that part is over with now we're going i'm gonna show you footage from the baby shower and um it was amazing thank you again to Gigi, and then also aunt marcy and aunt um monica and my mom too for decorating but it it was a great baby shower so baby showers are done <laughs> and um nursery is almost done and yeah i hope you like it bye